Get excited. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five sunscreens from 2022. Give this video a thumbs up if you're liking these best of 2022 videos. I've done quite a few and there are more to come and they're all saved in a playlist called best of 2022. Coming in at number one, Mentholatum Sunplay Clear Water Sunscreen. A Japanese sunscreen. It's a hybrid sunscreen, meaning it has mineral actives and chemical actives. It's got zinc and titanium dioxide, as well as Juvenile A+, a UVA filter, and octinoxate. One of the reasons I love hybrid sunscreens so much is that in contrast to an all mineral sunscreen, the white cast is often a lot more doable. It's not completely clear like an all chemical sunscreen, but it is much less in most cases in comparison to an all mineral formula. This product I adored super lightweight fluid. It's a color correcting formula with ultramarine pigments in it. I love the super lightweight fluid consistency of this product. It spreads on the skin very easily. It doesn't pill. It's a fantastic base for makeup. Easy, easy to tolerate around the eyes. Y'all know I hate it when sunscreens end up causing burning and stinging on the eyelids because this keeps people from putting sunscreen there and it's so important to use sunscreen in those areas to prevent accelerated skin aging in the form of wrinkles and fine lines and sunspots, as well as to help reduce your risk of skin cancer. It's an SPF 50 PA4 plus sunscreen. In addition to the chemical filters, this also has hyaluronic acid, a humectant. It has licorice root, which is helpful for redness and hyperpigmentation. It has panthenol, a moisturizing ingredient that's beneficial for those of you, especially who have dry skin. It also has magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. It's an antioxidant, so it may help in diminishing the effects of free radicals on the skin uh, by reducing reactive oxygen species. But to what extent it actually gets in the skin and does these things, hard to say, but it's there. It may also be beneficial for helping those of you who deal with hyperpigmentation. It does have uh, alcohol in it, which can be on the drying side, but overall makes this formula fast absorbing, non-greasy, and allows for good evaporation of sweat. It's wonderful if you live in a humid, hot climate especially, and it's great if you have oily skin. The formula overall, in my experience, is not drying whatsoever. If you have dry skin or combination skin, I would not worry that this is going to be too drying. It has a dewy to demi matte finish. For me personally, there's like no cast with this. Although it does have zinc and it does have titanium dioxide, if you have a deeper skin tone, there's likely going to be some white cast to it, but it's not going to be as striking as an all mineral formula. Now you can get this from Stylevana, and I believe you can also get it from Yes Style, and you can get it on Amazon. Moving on to number two, uh, the golden child of this year in terms of innovation, La Roche Posay's Uvimune 400 Hydrating Cream SPF 50 Plus. Now, why do I say that this is the innovation of the year? Because this particular sunscreen has a UV filter in it that is new, and it has been a work in progress for the past 10 years. Uvimune 400 is unique in comparison to any other UV filter out there and that it is meant to absorb really long wave UVA wavelengths. Those are the wavelengths that penetrate the skin really deeply, destroy our collagen, create a lot of free radicals that damage DNA, lipids, proteins, contribute to premature skin aging in all skin types, all skin tones. Not only are these wavelengths linked to premature onset of skin aging, but also to skin cancer. That's not to say that other sunscreens out there on the market are offering you inadequate UVA protection protection, but this one just goes a little bit above and beyond. Yeah, Uimmune 400 was launched in March of this year, so brand new. As a side note, La Roche-Posay has uh, a few sunscreens with this ingredient. So I'm talking about the hydrating cream here. That's what I tried and loved and adored. They also came out with two fluid forms. Uh, one has fragrance and the other does not. The fluid forms are going to be more lightweight. I do have one of the fluids. Uh, the fragrance free one, but I haven't really tried it too much. The few times I have used it, it's nice. It has a more lightweight finish to it, but both are pretty moisturizing, I will say, and neither are greasy whatsoever. Importantly, one of my favorite aspects of these, they do not burn or sting around the eyes whatsoever. They don't run into your eyes and cause blurry vision. Uvimune 400 is not the only sunscreen active ingredient, however, in this product, it also has octisalate, Juvenal T150, Juvenal A plus, 
Tinosorb S, Mexarel SX, and Ava Benzone. If you are based here in the US, you can't just go into a store and buy these. Why? Well, they're not approved for use in sunscreens in the US. It's not because they're not safe, it's just the nature of the way in which sunscreen active ingredients have to be introduced into our market and approved. It just doesn't happen here. So you have to go to another country to get it, or you can buy it online. Care of Beauty comes to mind, although it's currently sold out. And you can also get it on Amazon UK. Uh, you do have to pay duties and what have you. So it's not inexpensive to get it here, but there are ways to obtain it. Personally, I just really loved the hydrating cream though. Uh, like I said, they have the fluid formulas too, and those have been great. But the hydrating cream is moisturizing, doesn't look greasy, and is an excellent base for makeup. It doesn't pill underneath cosmetic. It's really exciting to have new sunscreen filters being developed and launched into the market to offer a wider array of protective options for people. As you guys know, probably know, finding a sunscreen that you like enough to wear consistently can be quite challenging. Having more ingredients uh, that can protect against UV rays is really going to be helpful in the future for innovating uh, more cosmetically elegant formulas that people are going to be more willing to accept and to use to protect their skin from the sun. Let me know in the comments if you had an opportunity that, this year to try out La Roche-Posay's new UV Immune sunscreens. I know many of you who watch me from different countries in Europe have given it a try and you have mentioned that you love it too. But coming back to the US, I've got three American sunscreens that I adored this year. Uh, Eucerin launched several new sunscreens this year. I've said this before, Eucerin does not make a bad product and they really hit it out of the park with their new sunscreens this year. The Eucerin Age Defense SPF 50, $14.49. You can get it at Target. It's an all chemical sunscreen. So there's no cast with this in my experience. Now it does, I did get some feedback from some, uh, some of you guys that you bought it, you tried it, you liked it, but it did cause burning around your eyes. For me, that never happened. Um, I tolerated it just fine. Loved it, very hydrating. Uh, it doesn't look filmy on the skin or greasy. I will point out it's not water resistant. Uh, so that may, be, may have been more of an issue for some people and why they got stinging in their eyes. Maybe it ended up running into your eyes, but it's a great daily moisturizing. Uh, face product that has sunscreen in it. In addition to the active chemical sunscreen ingredients, it has some inactive ingredients that you may find beneficial. I enjoy at least. Licorice root, y'all know from my videos, anti-inflammatory. It can help with redness. It's an antioxidant. It's good for skin that is prone to sensitivity and irritation. It has a very soothing and calming effect to it. This also has sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Now that is a form of vitamin C that Actually, in you know, a small study, it's been suggested to be beneficial for people with oily, acne-prone skin. Uh, so you may like that aspect of it, sodium ascorbyl phosphate. And this has sodium hyaluronate, the salt of hyaluronic acid. That's going to help with the moisture content of the skin. It's a very hydrating, moisturizing ingredient. It leaves a demi-matte finish to the skin. In my opinion, it doesn't look greasy on the skin. Works well under cosmetics, no pilling. Coming in at number four, the Bondi Sands fragrance-free sunscreen. They have a face-specific one, and then they have a body version. In my experience, and in my opinion, there is no difference between the face product and the body product. I was able to use the body product on my face, looked the same, felt the same, ingredients seem to be the same as the dedicated facial product. So all that to say, I would stick to the body product because on a per unit uh, cost basis, it's going to be more affordable. Uh, it's $12.99 on the Amazonian. No cast, water resistant, 80 minutes, great for the pool. And let's just take a moment to appreciate the fact that as a moisturizer, it really, at least in my experience using it and the feedback I've gotten from you all, it's very moisturizing, almost gives the skin a refreshed, hydrated appearance, dry lower legs, dry knees, get a rejuvenated look. Another thing I like about this is that it doesn't uh, get like when you, if you scratch your leg, you don't get that crud under your nails that some body moisturizers can leave. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a chemical sunscreen, no cast. Bondi Sands uh, markets themselves as cruelty free as well. And last but not least, Trader Joe's blew it out of the park to this year in terms of uh, competitive dupe type products with their daily facial sunscreen SPF 40. If you have ever used the popular Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, 
This was hailed as a dupe for that. And I have used both, and I have to say, this, this looks and feels and performs very similar to that product. Uh, it's a clear, colorless, chemical sunscreen, zero cast. It has a silicone type ingredient called isodotacane, which I adore in sunscreens it, because it kind of gives a poor blurring effect. It's not greasy. It allows for good evaporation of sweat so that you don't feel overheated. It doesn't make you look shiny or oily. It's very smooth. It glides easily. I didn't experience any burning or stinging around the eyes with this. It's water resistant. Again, clear, colorless, zero cast. It has shea butter in it, which is nice for dry skin. And it also has, uh, I already mentioned the isodotacane, water resistant, so I didn't get any running into my eyes. This was a saving grace this summer as a facial sunscreen. Now, many of you, because um, I brought this sunscreen up actually in my best budget skincare of 2022 video, and I was wondering if y'all are still able to get it at your Trader Joe's, and many of you said, absolutely, I've been buying it and I was just in there and it's still available, which is great. The other thing that I adored about the sunscreen is that I was able to use it on my lips. You should be putting sun protection on your lips, protecting your lips from the sun. They are even more vulnerable to sun damage because of the anatomy of the skin there is much different. Skin cancers there do occur and are relatively common. Uh, but I find personally a lot of facial sunscreens can end up being drying and kind of irritating on the lips. So I tend to grab in most cases towards an SPF lip balm, but this went on the lips well, stayed in place, helped with dry lips, stayed in place well, easy to reapply on the lips, and it's water resistant, so good good longevity on the skin surface there. And it's pretty affordable too, uh, under $9, which for a facial sunscreen of this caliber, that's a steal. They really did a great job. I really, I hope they don't, they don't discontinue this. Trader Joe's, you know, they, they launch stuff sometimes and then they take it away and you never see it again. Um, or sometimes they only come out with it on cer at certain times of the year. So this may be one that in the future you only see in the summer months, which is unfortunate because it feeds into the idea that you only need to wear sunscreen in the summer, which is not true. And especially if you go skiing, there's a lot of reflection on the skin surface. You can actually easily get a sunburn uh, while you're skiing. So definitely want to be protecting your skin from the sun. I just put sunscreen on every morning. And if I happen to be going out, spending a lot of time outdoors and the sun is out, I try and reapply. Um, but uh, I put it on every morning because I like to use a moisturizer in the morning and my sunscreens are moisturizing. So that's my habit, that's what works for me. And I also rein in other sun protective behaviors. Wear a hat if it's sunny out. Um, I don't stay out in the sun too long. I seek shade if I'm gonna be outdoors for a prolonged period of time. I wear sunglasses to protect my eyes and sun protective clothing. Sunscreen's not a shield of armor, so don't get too confident, but it's definitely an important aspect of keeping your skin healthy long-term. All right, y'all, that's a wrap up of the top five sunscreens from 2022. This year flew by so fast. Great year though, lots of good sunscreens. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Many others that were tried, reviewed, and adored this past year. So check out my videos reviewing, for example, the Isden sunscreens. I also reviewed plenty of Korean sunscreens that I adored this year, like the Beauty of Joseon one. There are so many good sunscreens this year. It was kind of hard to narrow it down to just five. Let us know in the comments though, what sunscreen you fell in love with this year, enough to use and use up. But if y'all enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.